Hello my precious friends, I really hope that you are doing great. Welcome to our today's class. It is our sixth and last lesson on the tenth topic of our work which is called radioactivity. As usual, let me commence by giving the quote of the day which states that if you work on the things you can control, the things you can't control will work out. We shall discuss that quote at the end of our class today. So today we're looking at applications of radioactivity and the first application is in the field of medicine whereby we are saying that iodine 131 is used as a tracer to monitor the function of thyroid gland also a radioactive sodium is used to monitor blood circulation disorders then uh, we also have the gamma rays from the cobalt 60 which are used to sterilize surgical uh, equipment then the second application is in carbon dating whereby carbon-14 is used to estimate the age of fossils. The third application is in detecting uh, pipe leakages whereby uh, the substance being transported is mixed with a radioactive substance. Then of course a detector is then uh, passed on the ground near the pipes to detect the radiation. Then the fourth application is in agriculture whereby you are saying that Tracer techniques are used to monitor uptake of minerals by plants. It is also used in uh, elimination of uh, pests. Then the fifth application of radioactivity is in determining the thickness of materials such as uh, thin metal foils. We also have paper and also uh, plastic materials. Next, we look at hazards of radiation whereby you are saying that Radiation hazards arise from, one, exposure of the body to external radiations. For example, if your body gets uh, exposed to uh, gamma rays, which have a very high penetrating power, then it's likely to experience uh, the hazards or the negative effects. Then two, injection or inhalation of radioactive uh, matter is likely to cause negative effect in your body. Then the effect of radiation depends on, one, the nature of the radiation. Of course, uh, some certain types of radiation have more harmful effect as compared to others. For example, we know that gamma rays have very high penetrating power. Therefore, uh, they are highly or they are likely to cause more negative effect. Then the part of the body irradiated. Yeah, of course, some body parts are more uh, sensitive, hence are uh, heavily affected by these particular radiations as compared to uh, other body parts which are less sensitive. Then we also have the dose of the radiation. The more the dose of the radiation, the more the harmful effect and uh, vice versa. Then the damage done to the living tissues uh, by ionizing radiation depends on one, the energy are carried by the radiation. Of course, the more the energy, the more the damage, the lesser the energy, the lesser the damage. Then the ionizing power of the radiation, the more the ionizing power of course, uh, the more the damage to the living tissues as opposed to uh, the radiations which have very low ionizing power. For example, we have the uh, gamma rays. Then the hazards of alpha particles is slight uh, compared to the hazards from beta and gamma rays. This is due to the fact that alpha particles do not penetrate uh, the skin as much as beta and gamma uh, radiations. Of course, if the uh, radiation is not able to penetrate through the, sk the skin, then it means that its ability uh, to harm the internal body parts is also uh, very low. But for example, something like the gamma radiations, they have very high penetrating power, therefore they are likely to penetrate through the skin and cause damage to the internal uh, body tissues. Then lead or concrete shielding is used to protect the body against the gamma rays. We said that uh, gamma rays are stopped by either lead or uh, concrete. Uh. Then beta radiations is minimized or stopped by uh, a sheet of perspex or aluminium of few centimeters in uh, thickness. Lastly, we are saying that precautions should be taken when handling radioactive materials such as the alpha, the beta and the gamma rays because when these radioactive materials are allowed to penetrate through the human body, they are going to have a negative health impacts onto the internal body uh, organs. For example, never hold radioactive material using bare hand. Instead, 
use a pair of forceps and also keep the radioactive material into thick lead boxes. The reason is because the thick lead boxes can absorb any stray radioactive material. Remember, uh, lead can be used to stop even the radiations with the highest penetrating power such as the uh, gamma rays. Next, we look at the nuclear fission and the nuclear fusion. So we are going to start with nuclear fission, which simply refers to the splitting of nucleus to give smaller and more stable nuclides. So uh, it happens when a nuclide absorbs a neutron, then this process is accompanied by evolution or production of uh, energy. For example, we can have uranium, which has a mass number of 235, atomic number 92, which is absorbing a neutron, which has a mass number of 1 and no atomic number, uh, to form uranium, which has a mass number of 236 and atomic number 92. Then this uranium is going to undergo what we are calling the nuclear fission, or it is going to split to form uh, barium, which has a mass number of 144, atomic number 56. Then it is also going to form a krypton, which has a mass number of 90 and atomic number 36. Then we are also going to have uh, two neutrons, uh, of course, uh, each having a mass number of one and no atomic number. Then we are going to have evolution or production of energy in this process. So hydrogen bomb usually works on this principle of nuclear fission, whereby we are having uh, two hydrogen atoms which has mass, mass numbers of two and atomic number one which are simply combining then they are splitting to form a uh, helium which has a mass number of three and atomic number two then you are also having a release of a neutron which has a mass number of one and no atomic number then we are having evolution of uh, energy then two we look at what we are calling the nuclear uh, fusion which is simply the process in which light or small nuclei combine to form a heavy nucleus. So this process is accompanied by liberation or giving away or loss of large quantities of energy and like uh, a nuclear uh, fission. For example, formation of alpha particles when lithium fuses with hydrogen. So we are having lithium which has a mass number of 7, atomic number 3, which is uh, combining with hydrogen atoms, which has a mass number of one, atomic number also of one, then they are going to give us a uh, beryllium, which has uh, a mass number of eight and atomic number of four. Then, of course, this is going to uh, give us a uh, helium, which has a mass number of four, atomic number two, and another helium, uh, which has a mass number of four and atomic number of two. But remember, helium usually represents the alpha particles. So that is why we are saying that formation of alpha particles. So these are the alpha particles, the two uh, helium uh, atoms, which are simply the two alpha uh, particles. So the key thing to note is to know the difference between nuclear fission and nuclear fusion in terms of their definition. Then you also need to remember that for the case of nuclear fission, there is evolution or production of energy. But for the case of nuclear fusion, there is liberation or loss of energy. So we've come to the end of our class today, but we need to discuss the quote of the day. The quote of the day stated that if you work on the things you can control, the things you can't control will work out. So the quote is encouraging us to work on ourselves and improve our skills no matter the circumstances we find ourselves in. So the quote is also reminding us to be persistent in our actions if we want to realize our dreams and goals. We must therefore learn to control what is within our means such as our effort, our determination, self-discipline, hard work and commitment. And lastly, recall that you are a product of the decisions you made yesterday. Then you will be a product of the decisions you make today. Therefore, be very careful with the kind of decisions you make because they're going to affect the kind of life that you are going to have. So this was our last lesson on radioactivity. That means in our next lesson, we are going to start a new topic, which is electronics. Huh? Thank you very much for accompanying me until the end of this particular lesson. I do not take it for granted. In case you are new to the channel, kindly hit the subscription button and also turn on the notification bell so that whenever I upload a new video, you'll get notified. Until next time, this is Kind Tuition Academy. Thank you very much.